Example of adjustments in color. Uh, channel mixer is very similar to like black and white and changing certain colors that you want to change. So you could only change the greens. So if I want something more red, I can change it more red, or if I want it less red, but I'll let you decide on that. Um, I'm going to minimize him. I'm going to minimize him. I'm going to minimize him. I'm going to bring out this little boy here that I took a picture of. Okay. Uh, so if I want the red to really pop out, I'm going to go to Image Adjustments, and then I can go to my Channel Mixer, and I can increase my reds. And notice how it's getting more red. If I want less red, I can like decrease the reds. It's more dull. And you can do that to different colors as well. I'm going to go to Image Adjustments, and uh, Gradient Map. I really like Gradient Map. It's a really good effect. Okay. Uh, now if you go to Gradient Map, you'll get the default just double click on that, uh, the gradient here, the scale, and you'll get this option. Now we learned about how to make a gradient in a previous lesson, but this is a gradient map. Um, you can basically choose like, like say, I only want to use like these two colors in my photograph. And basically it's like taking a black and white photograph, and instead of black, it's going to be like blue. And instead of white, it's going to be like yellow. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change, click on the square and double click and instead of that gray tone I'm gonna choose maybe a light blue tone okay and instead of this white tone because notice now all the dark stuff is blue and all the white stuff is white now instead of a white I'm gonna change it to let me see I'm gonna change it to more of a Maybe a pink. Okay. And of course, you can make it more dark by taking the color slider over here. But don't take it all the way across like I just did. You can choose to increase more pink by choosing the slider and taking it more pink. So now notice the um, this was white, and now it's pink. If I want it more white color, I can go back to white. So you can choose the way you want that to appear. Okay. You can also choose like three colors if you'd like. Like if you go click on this option right here, um, you can choose like different colors uh, to use. And you'll notice I have three different colors I can now choose. So basically my blacks are going to be purple, my midtones are going to be blue, and then my whites are going to be orange. Okay? Try not to go too crazy though on the colors. Try to be more subtle if you can. I know a lot of students, they, they find out these new techniques or new uh, tools and they like to go crazy with it. And the more you go crazy, the, the more it takes away from like your photography and your style. So try not to mess it up too much. Uh, so I'm also going to show you photo filter. Okay. Now a lot of times on a camera, you can change and put on a little filter on the end of the lens. Like, uh, for example, if you want something more warm, like usually you use this with people because it'll give a more warm feeling. You can choose like a warm filter and hit OK, and it'll basically bring out a little bit more of the warm. Basically if you're by candlelight, that kind of like warm feeling. Um, I'm going to go back to image adjustments, photo filter. I like to do the sepia. Okay, And when I go to sepia, I can increase the sepia to maybe like 80%. So notice it has a really cool effect. This is, it looks more like a old photography style like that's been worn out a little bit. Okay, so now it's a little bit sepia, a little bit dull tones of the color, but it's still there, the color. Okay, I'm going to hit cancel, and notice now it's like the normal bright colors. Okay, so we did that. Shadow and highlights is very important. Um, 
you guys know what shadows are, right? It's like the dark areas of your photograph and the highlights are the, like the lighter parts. So I like to sometimes increase my shadows or decrease my shadows so I see more of like the contrast, okay? So notice if I increase it, there's more white around like the white uh, blanket. But if I decrease it, that white really pops up because it makes everything else more dark. The blacks are more dark or the if it's a gray, it'd be like more black. And then I can like decrease my whites as well. So notice now it has more of a contrast look to it. Okay, I'm gonna cancel. Image adjustments, exposure. Okay, I talked about the, how to change your exposure on a photograph when you're taking the photograph by on your camera by adjusting like the the ISO, the f-stop, and the shutter speed. Um, but let's say you took a photograph and you use a flash and it's way too much light or it's really dark and you didn't, there's not enough light. Well, this is where your exposure can save you. You can basically like increase your exposure so it can be more bright. Sometimes it's, it has a cool effect. Um, you know, like it'll, it'll blot out all the other colors and choose, keep only like the really high contrasting colors. Okay, or you can go the opposite, and go really dark, like that. I can't really see. Um, so that's exposure. You guys already learned invert, okay? Uh, but we rarely use inverting color. Um, let me show you guys threshold. Now, a threshold is like a truly black and white. It's basically, well, previously when you change something to black and white mode, your ba it still has black and white, but it has all like the gray scale. It has all the like gray and dark black and light black, if that's a color. But this is either a pixel is black or a pixel is white, and there's nothing in between. Uh, so sometimes, and then you can change your levels. So notice in this photograph, like you see the darks, are spiking in these areas, okay? If you don't have much in darks, then it'll be more like light all the way across your histogram. But you can choose like to increase the lights or the darks for more of a creative uh, black and white feel. Um, the last thing effect I'm gonna show you is posterize, okay? Posterize is very similar. Um, it starts with a black and white pixel, but then it assigns another like color pixel next to it. So it'll look, so notice the colors are very obvious because it's only at level two. So it chooses like basic colors and it's very like bright. But the more we change our levels, then the more color variations it's adding around the pixels, okay? So you can like increase it, it looks like the same photograph, or you can decrease it, and basically the pixels start getting more defined, and it's using less uh, color variations of it. Okay? And I am going to show you variations because sometimes it's helpful to see a comparison. So, for example, this is my current pick. And then, or I could use my lighter for my current pick, and then I could make that my profile pick. If I want more yellow, I can choose like this photograph. So it's just a good way of you can uh, see different variations of the photograph. And of course, you can change your shadows and saturation and all this, and you can see the variations. Okay? So that's uh, different ways you can use the tools in Photoshop to adjust your photograph and hopefully that helps you um, not may, maybe recreate your photograph but adjust it to um, decide what parts of your photograph you want to concentrate on and uh, turn the viewer's attention to.